。千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Here we are once again, everybody. I want to invite everyone to center yourself, to gain that Tao state of mind in participation for this process. Where your energy, together with everybody else, will make this a special occasion. What I thought would be very helpful is to bring it up as a sequence, an illustrated sequence that I think will make the point really clear. The very last part of it, Ming, is all about. The spiritual clarity associated with spiritual awakening, spiritual illumination, and enlightenment. So let me take you through the three steps: harmony, constancy, and clarity. So this is basically recapping that last part of it in one slide. We start out with line twelve, knowing harmony is said to be constancy. Now, as I mentioned. We begin by establishing an internal harmony, harmony within. So here I'll use the the Buddha to represent that internal harmony, harmony within. When you have that internal harmony, you are able to let that expand outward to bring about harmony in your life, in your interaction with other people, harmonizing with other people. Last time, I used a couple of stories to make that point. There's harmony within the family. There's that story about how members of a particular family from ancient China came together to deal with、uh, the the rough beginning of a New Year celebration. Came together as a family, fostering farm harmony. Expanding that harmony, and then later on, when they have that New Year celebration, they can expand even further to harmonize with their relatives who are visiting. So that's one aspect of it, from the self to the family. The other aspect is harmony with everyone. So when I say everyone, I'm talking about the people you come into contact with. Some of them are acquaintances. Some of them are friends, and there's also the people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know that may not be any of the above. For instance, it may be customers at work, maybe coworkers who are not necessarily friends, but just someone that you know, etc. I used another story last time to illustrate this point.、It、was a story of the milk tea, so that's been recorded for anyone who missed it, but is interested to review that story. I think it does make the point very well. So, from harmony within, spreading out to harmony within the family, as well as harmony with the people you come into contact with. This, according to the line that we're studying, this is what leads to constancy. Constancy, I am representing with the yin and yang symbol, meant to be a stand-in for the Tao itself. The Tao itself is not something that can be that lends itself to representation because the Tao is the void. It is emptiness, but I think if I bring in a picture of the yin and yang symbol, everyone knows what I mean. That constancy is associated with the Tao because the Tao is constant. So then, that covers the first line. Quite a bit of ground 
covered in the first line. Now there's more, there's line 13. In line 13, it says, knowing constancy is said to be clarity. So we now have to understand exactly what it means when we say we must know constancy. Well, since constancy itself is associated with the eternal Tao, to know that simply means a true understanding of the Tao. It means a full comprehension of the Tao, and it means clarity. It means you have attained spiritual clarity. I use the open skies to represent that. Understanding of the Tao leads to spiritual clarity, which is about spiritual awakening. It's about illumination. It makes everything so much clearer. This, in fact, is the spiritual enlightenment in the Buddhist context. All about seeing the greater reality completely and clearly. It's a realization of emptiness. So as you look at this, going from the left to right, some may see this and say, well, you're talking about spiritual enlightenment when it comes to clarity, so shouldn't the Buddha be on the right instead of the left? Okay, so I want that to be an important point for everyone to ponder. If you have some thoughts about that, I want to encourage you to type it out. And I will be glad to explain as well. How come if we're talking about enlightenment, a Buddhist concept, on the right, the Buddha is on the left? Let me explain. The Buddha is not so much the end result in spiritual cultivation, but a means by which to help you attain that level. When you are actually at the level of spiritual enlightenment, it's not the Buddha. It's not you standing at the right hand of the Buddha. Buddha is not a deity. It's you becoming and attaining Buddhahood yourself and realizing the truth of emptiness and the illusory, transient, impermanent nature of the world. That, in a nutshell, is spiritual enlightenment, not the Buddha, okay? I want to make sure everyone gets that level of understanding. The conventional idea is forever associating a figurine, an image, the Buddha, to the idea of enlightenment. The reality is that enlightenment is not anything or anyone. It's a state of being. So let's continue on with our recap. Just about done with the recap now. Beyond this very important progression that starts with harmony, ends in enlightenment, we also talked at the very last part about the important concept that Lao Tzu wanted to get across, and this is to illustrate the constancy of the Tao by talking about things that are not constant, things that are not the Tao, the opposite of spiritual enlightenment, the opposite of constancy, or the, the eternal nature of the Tao. So at the end of 55, it talks about how things become strong and then grow old. This is contrary to the Tao, opposite to the Tao, opposite to constancy, eternal nature, etc. And, last line, that which is contrary to the Tao will soon perish. It's going to be gone. It's here and then it's gone. It's transient. It's impermanence, like the rest of the material world. So what I pointed out last time was that the, the ending three lines actually match the ending three lines of chapter 30. So there are minor variations, but you can tell when I lay them out side by side, you can see the similarities and the differences. 
So the original Chinese differs by one character, and the English translation is also a little bit different because it is meant to be more dynamic in keeping with the rest of the chapter. So overall idea, the concept is the important thing. The emphasis is that anything that is too strong, too aggressive, too violent, will quickly come to an end, will quickly die down. And we have seen numerous examples of that in our daily lives. What we want is the opposite. We want to be lasting. We want to continue with the Tao cultivation for a long time to come. The journey is full of exciting opportunities, discoveries, adventure, and fun. So we have a lot to look forward to. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.